Hamjambo wakulima and Happy New Year. Today, I want to show you some 30 or so common weeds you are likely to find in Kenyan farms. The basic definition of a weed back in high school was that a weed is a plant that is growing where it is not wanted or supposed to. Well, some of the plants you consider to be a weed could be an ornamental flower to others. So get a pen and a paper, list them as I rush over them. Once you have the name, I'm sure you can find out more information on the plant in books or online. Most Kenyans who grew up in a farm setup know this weed. Maybe you used to chew its bittersweet leaves for fun or it was simply a nuisance in your farm. The weed has no stem and it will grow in bunches. And if I remember correctly, chemical control was not as efficient too. See, the weed has a network of stolons and bulbs like these ones underground that makes it very hardy and hard to control. They look like small bulb onions or garlic. The common way to control this was by physically digging it up frequently and placing the bulbs away from the soil in the direct sun to dry up during dry season. There are many other types of oxalis, but I find latifolia to be the most troublesome. Oxygonum is a predominant weed in Kenya. It produces small whitish flowers that eventually develop to characteristic spiked fruits. The fruits are arranged in a rows, and as they mature, they tend to fall on the ground, and this is the means by which this weed spreads. This is one weed that was a major source of livestock fodder when I was growing up. This weed reminds me of a similar weed called Staba. By similar, I am considering the spiked fruits. There are many types of nightshades in Kenya. Generally, nightshades are feared due to their toxic alkaloid, solanine. The weed produces edible orange fruits for young boys and birds. Only the orange ripe ones are edible. Don't try the unripe green ones. The leaves can be used as vegetable, African indigenous vegetable, but some processing had to be done before cooking, especially the local varieties, to remove the bitter alkaloids. Say boiling the leaves and discarding the water before cooking for human consumption. There are new varieties with bigger leaves and less alkaloids, ideal for vegetable production. Amaranthas are a group of weeds that grow in most counties in Kenya. I don't know the one you have in your area, but this weed is also a nice source of nutritious indigenous vegetable. This is a vegetable that is readily available even in open air markets. If you need some, you just need to ask for terere. It's quite sweet, especially when prepared by someone who knows is or a way around indigenous Kenyan dishes. And before I forget, amaranth seed is also a very hard to find cereal, more nutritious even than sorghum. There are actually varieties that are a good source of seed, just like sorghum. The seed makes nutritious flour, good for growing kids and elderly members of the society. In my ornamental flowers video, I did talk about marigold and its role in landscaping. It turns out that minuta is a common weed in Kenya. The weed has a characteristic strong smell or odor. By the way, it's quite a valuable ingredient when it comes to organic farming. It can be used to brew organic pesticides. It can also be used in push and pull strategy of IPM, a strategy that requires its own video under IPM. So this though is a common weed in our farms. It's not as common in arid counties 
but in semi-arid up to the islands of Kenya. This is its flower and it opens up to beautiful yellow color. The plant has hollow stems. Should you break its tissues, it produces a milky sap that you should not get into your eyes. Else, it can irritate you for some time. This weed is also a good source of livestock fodder, especially for rabbits. I have heard of some communities that use it as a vegetable, just like spinach, but I have never personally tried it. In my previous ornamentals video, I talked about the role of Tradescantia plants as ground covers. I talked about Zebrina, the plant that looks like zebra. Remember, Wandering Jew behaves just like its ornamental cousins. It likes shady, humid areas in the farm. It has succulent stems that root easily when they touch the soil. It's also a source of livestock fodder, but you have to be keen when composting the farmyard manure, not to end up spreading the weed. If you are not careful, just like Oxalis, wandering dew can be easily spread by manure that is not well composted. Devil's Oswip is a perennial weed that has characteristic back-facing flowers like hooks that can attach on your clothing or livestock fur. This is the common way of spreading the weed too. It can be used as livestock fodder source and as medicinal properties. Just don't give too much to the pregnant animals. A friend told me it could induce abortion. Maybe he has experienced this in the farm. I don't think there is any farmer in Kenya who doesn't know this weed. This weed is the cheapest source of livestock fodder for every youth keeping rabbits and chicken back in the village. Its black spiked seeds will readily attach on your clothing, making this its major form of dispersal, just like the devil's oswip. Its leaves are used by some communities as indigenous vegetable. In fact, most poultry farmers in Kenya talk about the medicinal properties of the weed, although I don't have much info on that. Maybe the vitamins it provides helps the chicken build up immunity, or maybe it's just placebo effect. I'm not sure. Emilia is a common annual weed in Kenya. It produces lovely yellow flowers. Don't confuse this one with the McDonald's eye that I will get to discuss more about later in the video. I think the more you interact with these weeds, the more you get comfortable in telling them apart. This is also an excellent source of livestock fodder. Sodom apple is a weed related to nightshades and tomatoes. The plant will produce purplish white flowers and later become yellow fruits. Some varieties even have thorny leaves. This reminds me of another weed by similar name, Apple of Sodom, not Sodom Apple. But I don't think it's a big problem in the farms. I have seen it growing mostly by the highways, along Mombasa Road maybe. Wild tobacco is also a common shrub also related to tobacco and nightshades. You also need to control this weed to control stubborn pests in your farm too. This weed can grow to a tall shrub that produces green fruits at the terminal ends that you should never try to eat. Flea bean is also a common weed that grows in most areas in Kenya. It can grow up to around 3 feet tall. It produces flowering bodies at the terminal ends that eventually produce cotton-like seeds. These seeds are light and are easily carried away by wind to uncolonized corners of the farm. Sometimes animals feed on this weed, but they don't take too much. I believe it's not their favorite type of fodder. When I mentioned the importance of weeds in landscaping, 
These are some of the weeds you probably know very well. I don't find it to be a big problem in the farm, but mostly in the general compound. You'll find it growing in every crack it finds. Children and guys with soft feet, like the ones who wear closed shoes from Monday to Monday, have to be careful when stepping on this weed. It produces spiked flowers that can pierce or irritate the skin under their feet. Congress grass is yet another invasive weed in Kenyan farms, especially the warm counties in Kenya, Machakos, Kitui, lower parts of Dika, and the like. Once it establishes in your farm, expect production to start declining drastically within a short time. It is one of those selfish plants that plant scientists call allelopathic plants. It is very aggressive and territorial. It may even reduce or inhibit fruit set in your cultivated crop. It can also act as shelter for most cultivated crop pests. Check out this population of red spider mites. It is not the easiest weed to control, but continuous manual weeding just before flowering can reduce the uncontrolled spread. This is also another kind of indigenous vegetable. If you know how to prepare terere vegetable, then this is even better. You can even use the young leaves for salad too. It's also equally loved by livestock as fodder, I must mention. Why do I keep talking about indigenous vegetables in this video? Well, I understand there is a growing number of Kenyans who are adapting sustainable farming ideas, organic farming, healthy heating lifestyle, and I am sure these weeds, or I should call them vegetables, are areas of interest to you. And now because I am talking about African indigenous vegetables, I think it's a good idea to talk about this weed. The Kikuyu community call it Mohikanahehu that loosely translates to a statement like she wedded while expectant. Yeah, crazy names. Anyway, this is a very good vegetable. The leaves are used as vegetables. And generally, the plant, of course, is used as livestock fodder. This weed reminds me of clenched fist, a luta continua kind of theme, a form of rebellion or struggle for survival. This weed is actually a fan, and so it will not produce seeds as we know them. It is common in highlands, coffee and tea growing areas in Kenya. It establishes without a problem even in the acidic soils. You may try to use commercial herbicides to control it, but the plant is quite stubborn. Most farmers resort to suppressing the weed by constant slashing or digging up the rhizomes or burning them. I did read in some article that this weed is associated with cancer. Apparently, this plant has substances that can mess up your DNA. Scary, huh? Now, let's talk a bit about Senna genus or group of plants. I bet if you come from arid and semi-arid counties in Kenya, you know this shrub. By the roadsides or in the farm edges where you don't plow as often, it produces elongated pods like green grams, and the seeds are the only method by which it spreads. Mature seeds can be carried by runoff water or stick on the mud under the feet of the animals to be carried far away. This is also another common senna shrub in Kenya. You will notice that livestock will eat all the grass and weeds around it, but it will not taste this shrub. Just like the ant bush that I have discussed earlier, sennas 
are very good in surviving in arid conditions. The shrub produces large pods that house seeds that are the main way of dispersal. This plant can grow to a large shrub like more than 4 meters tall if undisturbed. Some people use it as an ornamental shrub in those areas. There are also some communities in Kenya who use charcoal from the back of this shrub to treat the gourds used to make traditional fermented milk. Just the same way other communities use cypress charcoal in preparation of mursik milk. Now, this is one weed every person, not necessarily farmers, need to be aware of. Thorn apple. This plant is just bad news. It's extremely poisonous. All types and parts of this plant contain toxic alkaloids. It should not be found anywhere in your homestead. It produces thorny fruits and when they dry, they burst, releasing black seeds, which are the main form of dispersal. You may find it with different flower color shades, but don't get fooled. It's the same script, different cast, poisonous. I have not come across any livestock that even attempts to eat this weed. They seem to have hardwired instructions to keep off. Coach grass is a real problem to most farms in Kenya. I even tend to think that this is one weed that has contributed to wide use of systemic herbicides by farmers. Manual digging or uprooting of the grass may not achieve complete control as easily. This weed can survive in worst soil conditions like wet, dry, salty, acidic, name them all. The grass is quite stubborn and tricky to control. It establishes a system of rhizomes underground. It can spread via seed and by these rhizomes that sprout at the joints. Talk about being versatile. And since I'm talking about grass weeds, there is also another grass commonly called nut grass. This is also another serious challenge to farmers and landscapers. This grass will even survive waterlogged areas where other weeds will not survive. It's not easy to control by chemicals or manual weeding due to the large network of underground tubers it establishes. This plant, just like Congress grass that I mentioned earlier, it is very selfish and aggressive. It produces allelopathic compounds that suppress the development of adjusted plants. If by accident it establishes in your lawn, well, it's like coach grass. It's not easy to control. You have to weigh your options. Now, if you have ever practiced some form of beekeeping, then you know the importance of this weed. When left in the wild, it can grow to a shrub almost a meter tall. This plant has a characteristic mint-like smell. When you crush the leaves or from the flowers, it is the same used by Catholic priests on Sundays to sprinkle holy water to Christians. This weed has also countless antimicrobial properties, antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, mosquito repellent, and many more. I use it to wipe new beehives inside so that they can attract bees. One of my most watched videos is on chicks brooder heating method using infrared bulb. I can already tell that farmers are interested in new technology, use of sensors in control systems, in farming and such content. That's cool. Anyway, back to basics. Mimosa is a weed that is actually sensitive to touch. This reminds me of a weird term I learned in high school in biology classes 
called thigmotrophism, which I think, just like in electronics, that it is a biological implementation of sensors and feedback mechanisms. There is nothing new under the sun. I read somewhere that this wheat contains a toxic alkaloid, just like Lucena leucocephala, a common livestock fodder source I will get to discuss in another video. Now, those are not the only weeds in Kenya. I don't know about your interaction with weeds. Maybe it's that parasitic weed that looks like spaghetti taking over your life fence. Or maybe it's a stubborn cabbage on your water dam affecting your fish farming. Or the dreaded striker weed on your maize plantation. I hope you can identify some few weeds in your garden now. Remember to like, share and subscribe. I will also be grateful if you consider donating something small to support my online work. Use the link on the description of this video. Thank you for watching and God bless you.